Senate.com. Now to the state's junior senator. We recently sat down with Senator Bob Corker in his hometown of Chattanooga to reflect on the dozen years he has spent representing the people of Tennessee in Washington before rising to chair the powerful Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator Corker first built a construction business, served as state commissioner of finance and won election as mayor of Chattanooga. His Senate career started in 2006. People do a lot better than a vast collection of photos only begin to document the history Bob Corker helped write during his 12 years serving in the United States Senate. So what do you see as the hallmark of your time in Congress? I, I don't know that I could even do that right now, John. I, I, I came in during the surge in Iraq. It was a heady time for a new senator uh, who'd been the mayor of a city. Spent a lot of time at the White House. Then we had the financial crisis, and uh, for some reason I played an outsized role. And coming up with a solution there, I got a call at 10 o'clock one night to join uh, two other Republican senators, Hank Paulson and Ben Bernanke, and some other legislators. To uh, to 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 you know, at one point we thought money wasn't going to come out of the ATMs on Friday when people were cashing checks. So. Uh, then I went through the auto crisis, if you remember, mm -hmm. and uh, voted against the bailout. Didn't like that. Well, idea. no, that 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 actually that's that's uh, the narrative. I'm glad you asked. I was actually the only Republican senator seeking a solution. Yes, we voted against what uh, came up on the floor after negotiations broke down. But the fact is, we laid out what is called the Corker principles. George Bush on December the third called me at home here in Chattanooga at seven o'clock in the morning and said, "Bob, I'm going to go ahead and." extend credit to uh, General Motors and Chrysler, but I'm doing it under the Corker principles. And when Obama was elected or took office uh, just a few weeks later, he said, you know, Corker, we just want you, and they said it publicly, Rahm Emanuel, Larry Summers, we're following the Corker principles. So we actually were the ones that designed what the companies had to do in order to receive uh, taxpayer monies. And, uh, and th that turned out, in my opinion, to be very successful. Frustration marked part of his first term. Corker held dozens of town halls to drum up support to solve another crisis, the national debt. People in East Tennessee listened, but Congress failed to act. I think you know that projections show that in the not too distant future, our interest, the interest rates are rising right now, our interest on debt is going to be greater than what we're spending on the military. I think when that happens, it'll at least uh, get people's attention, right? And, uh, and yet, again, I, I fear that it's going to take a crisis to solve it. You, you called it at one time the most dysfunctional body you've ever been a part of. Yeah, I have, and I've said simultaneously to that that uh, it's also the greatest privilege of my life. I mean, no matter what may be the, the, the lack of functionality there, it's still the greatest privilege of my life to serve in the United States Senate. So what, what is your advice to the senator-elect from this state? I would say to her, um, still, she's going to be low on the totem pole as it raced to seniority. And I would just really focus on being the expert in, in, in a few topics. And what generally happens is uh, you'll be called upon uh, when the time comes for us to deal with those particular areas that, uh, that you focused on. Your advice to President Trump? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I think that he's had the instincts to put in place some pretty good policies. Um, uh, in, in some cases. I think that uh, if there was any way for him to, to realize that throughout our nation, uh, certainly throughout our great state, but throughout our nation, we have people of virtue, uh, people who truly care about their neighbors and fellow citizens. And if he could ever bring himself to try to focus on bringing out the better angels of our country, um, he'd have a lot more success and have a lot greater ability uh, to, to bring the nation together and solve problems. A problem-solving statesman. That's how Senator Corker hopes he'll be remembered. And though he's leaving the Senate in January, he may not be done with public service. If there was a way for me to make a big difference in the public arena again, uh, I certainly would consider it. You can watch an extended interview with Senator Bob Corker this Sunday morning at 930.